And now, a segment by Airmen for Airmen. It's What's Up Wednesday. What, 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 what's Up Wednesday with the Command Chief. And how's it going? Airman First Class Christy McDonald here taking over for Sergeant Anderson, who's sitting right next to me, at least for a little bit. And we, of course, have Chief Judge here with us. What's up, Chief? Hey, not much. How you doing this morning? Pretty good. Pretty All good. Right. Now, today's topic, I know the last couple sessions we've been talking about the upcoming inspection, big picture. Today we're going to be talking about first-term airmen. And okay. I myself am a first-term airman, so, of course, I have some questions for you. Um, the first one is actually... Um, when I first got here, you know, my only impression of NCOs was the uh, MTLs and MTIs at basic and tech school. And even though I had some great ones, there's some people who had ones that weren't exactly that nice women, were definitely very intimidating. What would you say to those airmen when they first get here and they're working with NCOs, like how to overcome that intimidation? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is that MTIs and MTLs have a specific job to do. Mm -hmm. and, and that is to indoctrinate you into the Air Force. In other words, to make you blue, to make you Air Force blue. So their job is completely different. When you get here, your NCO's job changes, and their job is to guide you, to train you, to, mm -hmm. to make sure you follow um, you know, the standards, to discipline you. So their job's a little bit different, where uh, the MTIs are trying to, you know, enforce rigid, rigid standards. Your NCOs here, they're trying to guide you, let you make mistakes with your job, train you. Um, so, so when you ask, you know, how do I overcome being afraid? <laughs> um, I don't think it's so much that um, you need to be afraid of them as more as, as you have to respect that, hey, they're staff sergeants. They've been in the Air Force for a while and they have the knowledge that I seek. So mm -hmm. instead of looking at that as oh my God, I'm afraid of them, I don't want to talk to them. It should be, you should try to say, hey, this is the person I need to go to. They're, they're the expertise or the expert in my field um, and I need to get as much as I can so I can become the best airman I can. Now, with that said, on the other side, the NCOs have to do the same thing. You know, the right. MCOs have to understand their role and, and uh, I, I would guess that uh, the vast, vast, vast majority uh, understand their their spot in the Air Force, and their spot is to take young airmen right out of tech school and get them ready to replace and be the next NCO, to replace that NCO. All right. <laughs> um, also, here on base, I know this is a smaller base, and there's a lot of families here, a lot of kids, and <laughs> there have been some some of my friends who this is also their first place like man there's so much stuff so many activities for kids what about me as a single airman or even families who don't have kids and they're just here with their husband or wife what would you say to them well that's that's a really good question um hang on one second <coughs> sorry about that the uh <laughs> um the one thing i think our four support squadron does very well is that they try to gear certain activities towards adults adults mm -hmm. only uh, one initiative run by uh, Mr. Mark Sullivan, who is uh, just so passionate about it, is the Single Airman Initiative. And we were giving f uh, given funding from USAFE. Uh, we are on our second round of funding. So what is a Single Airman Initiative? Well, for us here at Insterlich, it means that if you're single or you're unaccompanied, you can attend these activities for a reduced price. Now, what's the good side to that? Well, number one, it's cheaper for you. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> Number two, there's no kids, okay? And, and, that, and that sometimes means a lot when you're 20 years old and you want to hang out with other 20-year-olds and you don't want to listen to patty cake on the bus all the way <laughs> right. uh, while a parent's trying to keep their child entertained. Um, so we think that's a really, really good thing. And I'll give you an example, and, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of those uh, coming up here. But last year, we took uh, 20 airmen to the mountains, uh, took them skiing for two days, and then the third day they went ATVing in the snow. Um, and nice. it was all single airmen uh, or unaccompanied, and they just enjoyed it, and it was at a reduced price. You can find these activities in the happenings. And starting next month, you'll see next to a certain activity, it'll say single airman initiative. Um, and those will be the things that are strictly for adults. The other thing that our force support squadron has done is you'll see that there's an adult swim, um, which is also very popular. Mm -hmm. and. 
I think coming up in September, they're going to have one more adult swim night at the pool. Um, and the last one I heard was a big success. And they let you bring coolers, and there's an, they, charge, uh, they don't charge the entrance fee because they use the funding to do that. Um, so that's a really big, uh, big hit with airmen. So the opportunities are out there. You have to find them, uh, and you have to go you know, looking. We're trying to make it easier and do a little bit more advertisement. There's also another uh, avenue, which is an email distribution list. And you can get your name put on that. And our marketing and our outdoor recreation director, our actually our outdoor recreation director, Ms. Bortles, she will email you directly with what's coming up for single airmen or unaccompanied airmen. Um, so it's a great, um, a great opportunity. It's, it's a great way to be just around adults so that you're just not uh, sitting at the club. Right. <laughs> so. All right. Yes, I have. I think I've been on one of those trips, too, and they were a lot of fun. Right. And, and there's a lot of local trips, just like day trips. Um, we actually did focus groups with the airmen, mm -hmm. and we said, okay, what do you want to do? And, man, I tell you what, we got some surprising answers. Um, one of them was orchestra. Really? We wanted to go to the orchestra, and we actually did an orchestra trip. Uh, it was very popular. We, f we actually filled up the orchestra trip before we filled up the uh, brewery trip. Wow. So we were really surprised about that. We're also going to do some other things um, that they're looking at called things like food and finance, where we're going to bring the single airmen together, teach you how to make a meal, then you eat the meal, and while you're eating, you're going to get some tips on, not on checkbooks and all that kind of stuff, but on, hey, how do you invest? Uh, how do you buy a house? How do you do those types of things, S specifically for single airmen? And, and we think those are really popular, and those are based on the demand of the airmen. Now, with that said, if there's airmen out there, be like, hey, chief, I want to, I think it'd be fun. I got friends who want to do X, uh, whatever that may be, uh, a, a kayaking trip on a Donna Lake or whatever. All they need to do is just shoot me an email, and I'll get that, make sure that gets over to Mark Sullivan, and we'll get those uh, trips in the books for you. So we're really excited about the program. We, uh, we're one of the f one of few bases that spent all their money from the first round. So they took all the money back that wasn't spent, and they redistributed it to the bases that spent their money. Mm -hmm. So um, we got we actually got double the amount we did the first time. So we're really excited about that. Very nice. <laughs> um, I do. Let's see. Let me gather my thoughts here for okay. a second from that one. Um, are there opportunities for the first term airmen here on base to take the take leadership roles, um, either if it's with that. Um, could be that you were just talking single about single airman initiative. Yes, yeah, okay. single airman initiative or um, other organizations on base. Is there that opportunity? There them? is. There's there's always opportunities for you to lead, and it doesn't have to be a formal organization. You can lead your peers. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can be a leader just in the way you you uh, act. But to a answer your question about uh, private organizations, we do have uh, what we call the ACE, the Airman mm -hmm. Committed to Excellence. It's a great organization to be part of. Uh, not only does it help you meet people, it helps you network, um, and it's always good to be able to reach out and touch somebody at another organization and say, hey, can you explain this to me or help, help me with this or with your own uh, organization? So they get, we got ACE. There's other opportunities, too. There's, there's the Toastmasters, which is, uh, not, for you guys, don't need it. I might, but, um, you know, where you go and you learn how to be a better speaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter what your, your career field is or whatever, by the time you, um, as you gain rank, you're going to find that you have to speak in front of people more often. Um, and, and as you saw earlier from my, uh, <coughs> my interview for you guys <laughs> on, on camera, um, it takes practice, and, uh, and you have to be able to spit out a few words um, and you'll find that our senior commanders are really good at that. But uh, mm -hmm. Toastmasters is a great way to do that as well. Airman Leadership School offers many um, classes in the evenings uh, um, on leadership and, and uh, these different, uh, and, I, and I just drew a blank on the classes, <laughs> but, uh, but you'll see those advertised, and that's a great way to go. And, you know, if you're a leader, you are always trying to learn. You are always trying to be better. So you might be sitting in here broadcasting, um, but you know, maybe one day when um, 
you know, one of your sergeants is, uh, so your, one of your staff sergeants is working commercial spots or something, and mm -hmm. you're not familiar with that equipment, you know, when you're walking by, do you stop and say, hey, what about this or this or this? Do you ask those questions? That's being a leader. That's okay. trying to expand your horizons and, and learn as much as you possibly can. Sometimes we get so stuck in go to work, go home, go to work, go home, right. and we don't, we don't expand our horizons. But uh, getting out with the ACE, the Toastmasters, there's plenty of opportunities to uh, coach and do those types of things on the base um, that I think airmen can get out and do those things. And that's the mark of a true leader. And, and it will pay off. There are many times I was, um, I hate to use the word forced, but uh, I was volunteered uh, as a young airman and a young staff sergeant to get out and, uh, hey, you're going to go do this. And I went kicking and screaming the whole way. Um, and it wasn't until many years later that I realized that my, my supervision was trying to kind of force me into those leadership roles, and it, and it paid off. Mm -hmm. So Very good. And any final mm -hmm. words for the first-term airman? Hey, you know, first of all, uh, I appreciate their service. Um, and I think that those of that were at the enlisted call, you know, I, I mentioned that you joined the Air, the Air Force in a time of war, and we are very appreciative of that. And we appreciate uh, the dedication that you have to your country. And that's really the bottom line and why we're here. We're not, we're not here for a paycheck. We're not here for education benefits. We're not here for the, for the travel around Turkey or around Europe. Um, those are all great benefits we have. Uh, but really, we're here to defend our nation and uh, if, if necessary, give our life for that nation. Um, but I would tell first-term airmen that they are some of the smartest uh, and well, um, you know, they have, they have a worldly, more worldly view than I did when I was an airman. And uh, use that to their advantage. Use that to your advantage and uh, get out there and find out what's going on and learn new things. And uh, don't be afraid. Uh, mm -hmm. We have all failed. You, you'll never be, be a chief. Um, if you if you haven't failed, um, because that's how you learn the best. When you're very successful mm -hmm. um, all the time, uh, that first failure is a killer. But uh, but you get to a point where you need to make mistakes so you can learn from them. And and the only way you make mistakes is to kind of put yourself out there. So right. but this is a great experience, and I I uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time out on your Wednesday morning to talk with me. And I appreciate the questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you got some more for me in a couple weeks. Absolutely. So we're, lo we're looking forward to that. Yes, okay. thanks, thanks for coming in. You hey. always give great answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're, <laughs> <welcome>. <laughs> You're too kind. You're All right, welcome. you guys have a great Wednesday and uh, four-day week. Yeah. Everybody be safe and uh, don't drink and drive and uh, be responsible. Great. All right, thank thanks you. Thanks again for mm -hmm. coming in. All right. Coming up next, we've got Goo Goo Dolls Home on AFN Ninja Like the Eagle.